Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, does it make a difference whether you were born in North Dakota or California? Does your place of birth affect your personality? Does it tell others something valuable or essential about who you are? Well, most of us would answer this question by saying, yes, of course it does. Because we often use uh, a person's place of birth as a kind of a tag, a, a handle, a handy label, which we can use to I identify the way uh, he thinks or the way she acts. We notice where a person is born, and so we call them a native North Dakotan or a native Californian. Now, I grew up on the east side of the Red River in Breckenridge, Minnesota, but I was born in Fargo. Does that mean I'm a native Minnesotan or a native North Dakotan? And does it really matter? Well, the place we are from, the people we come from, our environment, well, they do have an impact on our values, our, our, the language we use, our accents, even our sense of humor. Some would even say that our ancestry plays uh, an important role in who we are. Well, now this past week, I was watching an episode of the program called Who Do You Think You Are? It's a genealogy documentary. In each episode, a different celebrity uh, goes on a journey to trace uh, their, a part of her, their family tree. And in the episode I was watching, they were interviewing or talking with the actor Brian Cranston, who played the lead in the TV series Breaking Bad. While he was trying to trace his father's family, a side of the tree, as he knew very little about them. You see, his father had been an actor, and he had abandoned his family when Brian was just 11 years old. And so as they traced his family's history, he learned that his father's father had come from Chicago, and that he had been an actor too. And he had also abandoned his family. He'd gone off and enlisted uh, in the army in the First World War. And after the war got done, he came back from Europe, but he never went back to Chicago. Well, Brian later learned that his grandfather's father had been born in Ireland and had emigrated to Canada. And when the American Civil War began, he too abandoned his family, crossed the border into the United States, enlisted in an Irish-American regiment that fought with great distinction for the Union during the war and was wounded. He lived out the rest of his days as a disabled veteran in a disabled veteran's home in Ohio, never to see his family again. Well, upon learning this much of his family's history, Brian Cranston was deeply saddened. But then he was also filled with a sense of resolve that he would not be like the male ancestors in his family history, but he would always be present in his own family's life. Well, does it really matter all that much where we are born and who were our ancestors? Are we genetically programmed to repeat the sins of the past? Well, according to Jesus, it doesn't matter where we are born. Not on this earth, anyway. But it does matter if we are born from above. What Jesus says about being born from above, now that might upset those of us who put a great deal of stock in our family history, our genealogies, where we were born, or whether we could call ourselves a native of such and such place. But Jesus' answer to Nicodemus late one night in Jerusalem puts that matter very simply. No, it does not matter where we are born only that we are born from above. You see, Nicodemus was one of the respected leaders of the Pharisees. He'd come to Jesus with a sort of, I guess you'd say, a hesitant curiosity. Remember that Nicodemus was an important figure for the faithful Pharisees, who were also kind of like a, a great family. They knew each other's ancestors, who they were, where they came from, who was their father, their grandfather, their great-grandfather. And so in the presence of Jesus at night, almost in secret, Nicodemus doesn't even ask a question at first. He simply remarks, 
that Jesus seems to have come from God. Jesus responds to the curiosity with a commanding remark about where people might come from. He says, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Now most of us today here have heard that remark before. Maybe not quite in that, that way, that phrase has been translated another way as being born again. You must be born again. Well, I suppose it could mean that. Or it could mean you must be born anew, but basically the word means born from above. You must be born from above, which includes, of course, the necessity that you're going to have to be born again. I dare say that when many of us hear that kind of talk, we imagine a a big revival tent with some sort of slick, syrupy altar call, or we may think of a quick and shallow religious experience which may not fit our personality or life, and so we kind of dismiss that term, which is really too bad, because Jesus is talking about today what may be one of the most important disciplines of the Christian life. He's talking about defining our identity, not by earthly standards, but by spiritual standards. He probably would agree with us in some way that our, where we were born or to whom we were born it matters to us. But Jesus wants us to be born entirely anew from above, and that our identities are shaped by something other than who our ancestors were, or the place where we were raised. But you know, the truth is that many of us like our breeding fine and just the way it is. We enjoy tracing our genealogical lines back, always carefully avoiding those family members of our tree that were less than scrupulous. We try to avoid cousin so-and-so or grandfather so-and-so who really didn't represent the family, don't you know? And when one's family lineage, when you trace it back a little bit after the first couple generations here, then you get 16 choices to choose from, which line to go. And after that, it's 32. And then after that, it's 64 choices from whom to claim our kinship. We can sort of pick and choose our ancestors. Most of us who are relatively comfortable in life do not like to talk about being born from above or born again because it suggests that we might have to give something up. Why be born again? Why change something inside of us, inside of ourselves, when our present lives and our present situations are just fine, thank you very much? Well, the reason is because Jesus does have something greater for us. That something greater is hard to define and so So it is that Jesus calls it being born from above, being born of the Spirit. And it's about freedom, and it's about a wonder in life. He says, the wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. As I said, here in North Dakota, this past week we know something about the wind. Wind has power that can be seen, what it does, and man, does it have power as we experienced. And so it is with God's Holy Spirit. The Spirit's power can transform our lives. The Spirit's power can wipe away our sins. It can shake the foundations of sin in our communities, in our nation, in our world. The Spirit's power can allow us to say things that our ancestors would never have dreamed of saying, but certainly would be proud of, even if they could not have said it themselves. Well, it's a way of acknowledging our God and the Holy Spirit's power in our lives. We make confession, confession of our faith that is given to us by the Holy Spirit. We make confession of God's presence in the world by speaking of the nature of our God when we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. You see, the Creed was an attempt by the earlier church to help us to better understand God's will and God's nature. And they took 
Jesus' words, like we read in John 3, 16 and 17, very seriously and incorporating them into the creed. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. They wanted us to see God's truest nature as that of a God of love. And it's not just a love for those people who love God in return, but it's a much more expansive love, a love for the whole world. And God wants salvation for the whole world. And Jesus is the means of that salvation. Martin Luther, in his small catechism, tells us about the Spirit and how the Holy Spirit's breath blows faith and understanding into us so that we may believe in this God of love. And it's the same Spirit, he says, that has called us together this morning as we gather for worship. And it's the same Spirit's breath that's going to blow us out the doors again and into the world to share that good news of the gospel. It's the Spirit's power that blows faith and life into us so that we might be born from above and be led by that Spirit. So whether we are born in Fargo or Fresno, New York or New Mexico, we all may experience this gracious gift of being born from above. And the Spirit's wind may lead us back into our own homes and our own neighborhoods and our own communities to share the good news, or it may lead us all across the world. But always, always it is promising us new life, new life now and new life in the age to come. This is most certainly true. Amen.